So today we talked about roof rippers. People who tore open another family's roof and lowered a paralyzed person down so they could be in front of Jesus. And that Jesus opposed the religious and the proud and the elite and he ran in obedience to his heavenly father into relationships with people who would, well, in the end Jesus became, in being in a relationship with Jesus, we were reunited with God. And we love that about the gospel story and our role in it, that we are called not only to be before Christ in relationship and obedience to him, but we're also called to be roof rippers. We are called to be people who make every opportunity possible for people to meet Jesus. So for us at the Foundry, it means we're going to have multiple venues, multiple services a week going on here at the Foundry Church. We are hoping by the end of January that we'll have three new service options right here on site in early February. Not because we just want to grow, 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 but because we want people to have an option to bring people to Jesus and let, him, let them meet his community and the word of God living and active right here. So we're going to open up the options of when you can come. We're, well, basically we're going to tear the roof off and say, hey, we're not going to do church on your terms. We're going to do it on yours. Right? We're not going to do it on your or my terms. We're going to obey Jesus. And when we do that, we recognize that God is deeply invested in being in relationship with those whom he died to redeem. For you and I, the calling is quite clear. Because of our relationship with Christ and our trust in his character, are we willing to be roof rippers? Will we do anything possible to get those who don't know Jesus before him? Why do you think the religious elite didn't like Jesus? How is obeying God different than just following the rules? Has God ever challenged your idea of how to worship him or um, how to pray or approach him? Has God ever challenged what you believe to be kind of the way that's done? Why do you think Jesus said to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven before he physically healed him? Let's make it personal. In your groups, I want to know. I want you to talk about it. Who do you need to rip the roof off for to get them close to Jesus? All right, kids, here's your questions. First question is, if you had a friend who was very sick, how far would you go to get them medicine? What would you do? All right, this next question is a little long, so bear with me here. Hurts on the outside are easy to see. It is easier to know if someone has a broken arm than to know if they have hurt feelings, especially as we get older. We mask that well. God wants us to care for people's outside needs that are easy to see, just like Jesus did. But he also wants us to care for their inside needs. Our biggest inside need is the need to be forgiven and to know that God loves us. How can we meet that need for others? I want you to pretend you're the paralyzed man. How far would you want your friends to go to get you in front of Jesus? The question we're answering this week is, do we think we'll ever have a church directory? This one's super easy. Probably not. Currently, the answer is no. We have no intention of investing the money and the effort into making that happen uh, for the simple reason that um, I, I don't know that we need a church yearbook at this point. Um, we, we have a number of people in our church 
but at the same time we're on different campuses, different locations, different venues, different services, and instead of having a big yearbook of people, we would like to make sure you're making the effort to invest in the people who worship with you and connect with you in, uh, in your groups and different things like that. So right now, as for uh, creating, I like calling it a church yearbook, um, no, we are not planning to do a church yearbook. It's not a yearbook. Again, what was it called? Um, directory. Sorry, I kept saying yearbook and then I forgot the real term. So no, we're not planning on a church directory slash yearbook. But I vote for Kyle for um, best audio visual production and best smile. Yeah, Kyle has a nice smile. <laughs> so yeah, and Justin would get best laugh because he always encourages me when I tell a stupid joke and he laughs really hard. I like that. I don't know what the other awards would be. Thank you.